following opinions are solely those of Botest.com and its test captain. The new Riviera 395 SUV was designed for boaters looking for a boat that is nimble, easy to operate and maneuver, and is economical to drive. Let's take a look at her performance and operating aspects and see how Riviera has done. The Riviera 395 SUV has a length overall of 43 feet 6 inches. The hull length from stem to transom is 39 feet 7 inches and the beam is 14 feet. Her maximum draft is 3 feet 11 inches and her dry weight is 27,778 pounds. With 43% fuel and 100% water on board, 4 people and light gear, we had an estimated test weight of 30,486 pounds. She comes standard with twin 370 horsepower Volvo Penta IPS dual prop pod drives with joysticks. We recorded a top speed of 30.5 knots at 3640 RPM. With pod drives, we don't often get a bump in performance at mid-range, but with this boat we did, and it came in at 82% of full throttle. Best Cruise came in at 3000 RPM and 22 knots, where we burned 25.5 gallons per hour, getting 0.9 nautical miles per gallon in a range of 308 nautical miles. At trolling speed, fuel efficiency is of course maximized and at 6 knots and 1000 RPM, the Riviera 395 SUV got 2.9 nautical miles per gallon and could travel 1035.6 nautical miles. All ranges are reported with a 10% fuel reserve. For acceleration, we recorded a time to plane of 9.1 seconds, reached 20 miles per hour in 12 seconds and 30 miles per hour in 27.5 seconds. Now let's look at the operating aspects of the 395 starting at the helm. It's located on the port side, has a 42 inch wide plush seat with individual bolsters and the footrest has been placed ergonomically for sitting or leaning. The seat is securely anchored to a wood cabinet. The standard VHF radio is in a cubby and the screen's a bit difficult to see. The upholstered helm console has a padded stitched raised median strip that houses the compass, a 7 inch Volvo Penta display, the Fusion stereo control and two rows of lighted toggle switches. We'd like to see an electrical outlet and USB port here. To the left, squeezed in between the wheel and the bulkhead, is the control binnacle and our test boat was equipped with features including trim assist, cruise control, single lever operation, and low speed control. Forward is the joystick, which is in good position for port side docking. In front of the wheel is a welcome air conditioning vent and a 12 inch nav screen. To the left is a sliding window. To the right of the median strip is an anchor control and chain counter. We measured 5 feet 10 and a half inches from the helm deck to the overhead. The forward brow comes down 6 inches. Forward of the helm console is a dark colored dash to reduce glare on the windshield. There's a defogging vent and the two pantograph windshield wipers with freshwater washers. An optional control station on the 395 is located on the starboard side of the cockpit which gives the operator a clear view of the boat's starboard side as well as the stern. This device makes docking a non-event particularly for those trading up from a smaller boat. Note that there are not many gauges and only three screens at the helm. That's because a C-Zone system comes standard. Riviera has been installing C-Zone for 10 years and this piece of equipment makes managing most of the boat systems quite simple. Light up the boat with a key fob before getting aboard. Upon entering, there's a 10-inch C-Zone just inside the door. It has connectivity with an iPad and from any place on the boat, all of the electrical systems can be monitored and controlled. That includes all lights, tank levels, air conditioning, generator, electronics and appliances. We can even shut down the whole boat with one touch. Moving forward to the side decks, we measured 9 and 3 quarter inches of width and the bulwarks are 5 inches high. The rails are 24 inches high aft, increasing as we move forward. There's a welcome handhold along the side of the boat. And notice that the engine room air intakes are relatively high and not on the side of the boat, close to the water. At the bow, we find a standard electric vertical windlass, which has an overload circuit breaker. Also standard is a 35 pound plow anchor with 114 feet of galvanized 5 16 chain. We'd add another 150 feet of chain. The chain locker is accessible on the port side and there's a raw water washdown bib located here. To starboard our controls for the windlass and storage. We access the engine room from under the cockpit sole via an electrically actuated ram that picks up the center section of the deck, the table and stern console. When it hatches up, the engine room can be accessed from three of its four sides. From the deck, all major fluids can be checked as well as the two raw water strainers. We'd like to see a step put in to help access this tight space. Riviera offers a 5-year structural limited warranty and, as with all Volvo Penta-powered yachts, Riviera has a 5-year limited warranty covering the helm station controls, multifunction displays, steering, propellers, plus pod drives and engines. Look closely and some of Riviera's best installation practices can be seen. 
For example, all bolts on the engine mounts are torqued to a specific tightness that's prescribed for each installation and marked with a red line crossing the bolt and the mounting plate by the installer. Later, a quality control inspector puts a torque wrench on the bolt and checks to make sure it's at the correct setting, and then he marks the bolt and mounting plate with a yellow line. With these lines in place, we can regularly check these engine mounts and know they're tight. Riviera does the same thing with all critical hose clamps. By equipping the boat with a joystick, having an electrically actuated engine room hatch, and providing the C-Zone monitoring and control system, we think that Riviera has done a good job of making the 39 SUV easy to operate and maintain. She's also comfortable to be on, but that's another video. Be sure to look for it. For now, that's my full performance evaluation on the Riviera 39 SUV. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.